And, and when you get home, uh, while you're home this week, <clears throat> you ought to read that entire uh, second chapter of Acts that you might witness the history of the beginning uh, of, the, of the church. Amen. But just for the sake of time, I want to read verses 5 through 13. And I'm reading uh, from the New International Version. It reads, Now, they were staying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews, <clears throat> from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that we, that each of us hear these in our own native language? Patricians, Meats, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judah, and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phrygia and Amphilia, Egypt and the parts of Libya and Serene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. My, my beloved brothers and my sisters in Christ, I, I want to um, use as a thought this morning, after the Spirit comes, then what? After the Spirit comes, then what? It, it seems to me that we get excited <clears throat> about Pentecost and about the Holy Spirit falling afresh on the church but then we allow Pentecost to wear out or wear off rather and so my what I'm saying to us is what do we do with the Spirit or what did the Spirit do with us now that we we have it you see the feeling of the spirit has to do with power for witnesses, for witnessing. For Peter made it clear when he spoke. And Jesus made it clear in that first chapter of Acts that when he leaves, he's going to send the Holy Spirit and that the Holy Spirit would give them power to witness. We're not asked in the scriptures to be baptized uh, by the Spirit. For this is something that God does once and for all. When we accept Jesus Christ as his son and as our Savior. But, but we are commanded in Ephesians to be filled with the Spirit. For we need his power constantly if we are uh, to serve God effectively. We, we, we cannot be effective servants for God unless the Spirit indwells us. At Pentecost, beloved, the church was filled with uh, the Spirit and 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 and. And, and, and experience the baptism of that spirit. But after that, we find out that they experienced many feelings, but no more baptisms. Occasionally, beloved, <laughs> some holy rollers among us enjoy debating the difference. But we ought to understand that the important thing about, about Pentecost is that we have an experience of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit reveals God's truth to us in his word. 
The baptism of the Holy Spirit for me means that I belong to his body. The fullness of the Spirit means that for me that my body belongs to God. The baptism of the Spirit is final. The fullness is repeated as we trust God for new power to witness. You see, baptism involves all other believers according to Ephesians 4 and 1 through 6. For it makes us one in the body of Christ. While the fullness is personal and individual. You see, my beloved brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter what denomination you are. It doesn't matter what sign you reside under. What we have to understand is the Bible reminds us of one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. So when you fall from grace and you come back and you repent, you don't have to be baptized anymore. Because the pastor lays his or her hand on you. But God, through the Holy Spirit, does the baptize. And when God does something, he don't have to redo it. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. You see, beloved, what I'm trying to say is that these are two distinct experiences that are often confused and misunderstood. But today, I want to talk about what, if anything, ought to happen within and without when one experiences the Holy Spirit. You don't mind me teaching for me, do you? You see, as we consider verses 5 through 13 of Acts chapter 2, because of the moving of the Spirit, the early church was, 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 was praising God in languages that could not be understood. You see, my beloved brothers and sisters, the Greek word translated language or tongue in Acts 2 and 8 is dialectos and refers to a language or a dialect of some country or some district. So my question is, go with me now, why did God do this? Well, I'm glad you asked. Pentecost was a reversal of the judgment at the Tower of Babel when God confused human languages in Genesis 11. God's judgment at Babel scattered the people, but God's blessing at Pentecost united the believer in the spirit. At Babel, the people were unable to understand each other, but at Pentecost, humanity heard God's praises and understood what was being said. The Tower of Babel was a scheme designed to praise humanity's effort and make a name for ourselves. But Pentecost brought praise to God. You see, the building of the Babel, the Tower of Babel, was an act of rebellion. But Pentecost was a ministry of humble submission to God. Another reason for this gift of tongue or languages at Pentecost, I believe, reading this text, was to let the people know that the gospel was for the whole world. I hear people from all different dialects in this text saying, wait a minute, are not all these people speaking Galilean? Then why is it that they know how to speak Galilean? We can understand them in our own language. I believe God was saying to us, even though it got started in Jerusalem, the gospel of Jesus Christ is for the entire world. Nobody has a pattern. No denomination, no race has a pattern has a pattern on the gospel. You see, God's desire for everyone uh, uh, is every, in, in every station is to hear, to receive, and to respond to the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you look at the text, the text says that everyone heard them speak in their own native language. The Spirit spoke to the people 
people within their own culture and societal, economical background and, and as the saving message of salvation in Jesus Christ. You see, the emphasis in the book of Acts is on worldwide evangelism. As it, as it bade the believers to go uh, to the uttermost parts of the world. One scholar by the name of Henry Martin says the spirit of Christ is the spirit of mission. In other words, beloved, God didn't just say the spirit didn't just fill us to rest on our laurels. Apparently, the storm that he insisted their praise, this rushing wind, this storm drew people together in the temple where the church was gathered in worship. I, I like that. Before I go home, let me put a pen here. I believe, we, we talk about service, but I believe from reading the scriptures that if we get our, our worship right, our service will take care of itself. You see, when they were gathered in worship, I'm led to believe that it was the praise of the worshipers that really captured the attention of the onlookers and the naysayers. You see, the careless listeners mocked and accused the church of having a wild party and, and getting drunk early in the morning. But others were genuinely concerned to find out what was going on in the church on that Sunday morning worship experience. The Bible says in verse 6 that the crowd was perplexed and amazed and they marveled. Beloved, isn't it interesting that the mockers of the worshipers Accuse the church of being drunk. You see, my beloved brothers and sisters, because wine uh, is associated with the Holy Spirit, the feeling. In verse Ephesians 5 and 18. Well, as I try to close here, my beloved brothers and sisters, Paul relates the two in contrast. For when a person is filled with strong drink, uh, the individual loses control of themselves and end up uh, being ashamed. But check this out. But when a person is filled with the Holy Ghost, when the Holy Spirit fills a person, that person has self-control and glorifies God. Strong drink can bring a temporary exhilaration, but the Spirit gives us a deep satisfaction of lasting joy that drives us out into the world and to share the praise of God's blessing uh, with people everywhere of every station. What I'm saying, beloved, is if we want others to join in our church, when we come back in or on Zoom or whatever you're doing, we have to be excited about worship and praising God. No matter the circumstances in your life, uh, we may be in a pandemic, but we got to get excited about God uh, and trust God, my beloved brothers and sisters, so somebody else uh, will ask what those people at Pentecost have. What does this mean? When somebody will say, can I have what they got? You see, my beloved brothers and sisters, how can we expect somebody to get excited about the church when we're not excited. You see, just like now, over 2,000 years ago, the church was under siege. The church was in danger, not by a pandemic called COVID-19. The church was under siege by Jewish religious authority, but they met in prayer and pray and pray serve in the upper room and God poured out his spirit upon the church in worship and praise and prayer. What are you saying, brother pastor? We, our lives may be in danger from COVID-19. We may be afraid because there is no vaccine, but the church ought to do what they did on Pentecost. We ought to go in our upper room and we ought to worship God and praise God because I believe that if we get our worship right, service will take care of itself. If we get our praise right, God will bring us through. You 
See, God has been. God is still good to us. I believe as I get ready to take my seat, it's time for the church to stop shutting and jiving. It's time for the church to let the world know of the goodness of the Lord. And it's time out for hiding behind these four consecrated walls. It's time to take our praise into the street. It's time to put our praise on social media. It's time to Zoom our praise. It's time to YouTube our praise. My beloved brothers and sisters, it's time to stream our praise live into the highways and heads that somebody might be amazed and, and begin asking the age-old question. Uh, beloved, uh, uh, what does this mean? Lane Chapel, let me ask you. When we worship and praise God here in this place, is there anybody asking the question about our worship? What does this mean? So my beloved brothers and sisters, when the Holy Spirit is poured out afresh on us, it's not poured out on us so we can look good. It's not poured out on us so we can have a social economic standard. The Holy Spirit, Jesus tells us, the Holy Spirit comes upon us to, so we can go out, beloved, and in the highways and the hedges and tell somebody about Jesus. But can I share something with you? I'm learning now that God cannot go back on his word. God gave us his spirit on Pentecost. He said, I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel. I want you to start at home in Jerusalem. Then I want you to go around the neighborhoods of Lakeside and Allendale. I want you to go down to the Cooper Road. And I want you to go down in Stoner Hill. And I want you to go down 78 and Mine Avenue. I want you to go there and preach the gospel. And then I don't want you to stop there. I want you to leave Streetport and go other places and tell somebody about Jesus. But what do we do? We got God's spirit. We get our praise on that main chapel and we go back to our houses. But, but check this out. Uh, I believe in COVID-19 that God has sent us another Holy Ghost time. Now God has forced us from the walls of Lane Chapel. Now God has forced us all over the world, beloved, so somebody else can hear. So I'm asking us, what are you doing? So the Holy Ghost came. So you've been filled with, what are you doing with being filled with the Holy Ghost? Ain't something just so you can brag on or tell somebody you feel with the Holy Ghost and you got a mind to go on. But what are you doing with the power that God has infused on you? Will you go now out to the highways and hedges and tell somebody else about Jesus? Let us pray. Grace of God, our Father, I come now in the name of Jesus. First of all, to give God the glory and praise for all of your blessings. I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, your continued refreshing of your people and your church. But I pray, Lord, that we don't just get it and sit down on it and talk about it, but that we will allow your Spirit to force us from these walls to the highways and the hedges to tell somebody else about the restoration and power of Almighty God. We ask you to bless it upon us now and always. And in this season of pandemic, I pray especially that through the means that you have given us through social media, that we can tell somebody else about Jesus, that they might have joy in their life today and the days to come. We ask it all in the name of Jesus, the Christ of God, we pray, and for his sake, and God's people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.